Hi everyone, this is Dr. Stefan. Welcome to another video. In this one, I'd like to answer a question about why sometimes some people have a flare-up of their COPD, their chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, when they're uh, dealing with um, cold, dry, windy conditions. So this is something that came up in one of the comments, you know, curious about cold, dry, windy air causing exacerbations. This was the, the comment. And it was on a video that I made about COPD. But I, I think I'd like to give you a bit of an opinion and a context about why this may happen so that perhaps you might have an idea of what could be useful in your case to discuss maybe with your healthcare provider, to think about how you're dealing with environmental exposures and so on. So first of all, I'd like to just start off by saying that COPD or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease is a condition that affects the airways mainly. There is also a component of emphysema, but let's just leave that for now and focus on the chronic bronchitis aspect. Because basically there is inflammation in the airways, in the bronchi, in COPD, that is driving the disease to some extent, as well as the emphysema that is something slightly different, that's deeper within the lungs, there's a thinning out of the lung tissue, but that's something, let's say, separate for this topic. But first of all, if we think about the component of chronic bronchitis in COPD, we have to think about the fact that COPD itself as a condition is not one condition for everyone. It has different what we call phenotypes. So that may mean that different patients have different features of the same condition. Even though we have a few criteria to diagnose COPD, it may be that other th features are different and that can be just because we are also different. So among these types of COPD that we have, we have a condition in which some patients are called frequent exacerbators. So that means that they have a lot of flare-ups of their COPD, maybe two or more each year. So that may mean that they require slightly different treatments. And that is actually captured in the guidelines that we have for, this, for the treatment of this condition. So in this situation, uh, people who have more than two flare-ups per year may anyway require potentially um, a treatment that might, might target their airway inflammation because it's been shown that they have slightly more airway inflammation. It's not the same inflammation that you would get in asthma, but they do have um, more of this. So we would want to target that inflammation. So whether that's by using inhalers that may contain a low dose of corticosteroids, for instance, which are more suitable in many cases for asthma, but they can work in COPD as well, but it depends on the situation. They may be eligible for some novel anti-inflammatory treatments and there are a lot of research there's a lot of research there are a lot of trials in this space at the moment to try to treat the inflammation that's been shown to be a feature of COPD we didn't think about it too much before we didn't feel it was a component but it seems to be and then some people may actually benefit from a low dose antibiotic treatment for a long term so this is something that's not used to actively treat an infection that's actively expressing itself but it's just to control the baseline inflammation and that can be something like um, azithromycin that's a common antibiotic that's used that's given maybe three days of the week only so so that's something that you can discuss with your doctor whether that's something useful for you but just coming back to the comment so about cold dry windy air causing exacerbation so that was the comment so i i gave you that context at the beginning because it may be that you are just one of the people who experiences these more frequent flare-ups. So that may mean that you may need a slightly tailored treatment in your case, and that's something you can discuss with your healthcare provider. But also, let's think about through some other issues that may be playing a role. So for instance, let's talk about the mucus production. So if you're struggling with COPD, you may notice that sometimes mucus can be sticky. The airway mucus, the phlegm can be quite sticky and hard to clear. Now, obviously, in COPD, people generally have more mucus production because of the condition itself. That's what happens. You have more mucus producing cells. These, uh, the ratio of these cells to the other um, airway lining cells increases because you are trying to clear different particles from the airway. This is one of the main triggers. There can be other things, genetic predisposition, so on, but we do know that there's a very strong link between the environmental exposures in COPD and how bad the disease is. So for instance, continuing to smoke, so cigarette smoke contains a lot of particles, they deposit themselves on the airways and they're really hard to clear, so the mucus production increases to try to help clear that. So it's a physiological response of the body, but at some point it turns into a disease itself. 
then there could be other dusts that you may be inhaling. There could be fumes from, you know, different environments where people live. Sometimes people have a stove inside their house. It's not clearing the smoke very well. There could be a lot of things that can be driving an increased inhalation of particles that your body is trying to clear. So obviously on top of that, if you're tr struggling to clear that sticky, gre sticky <laughs> green when mucus, let's just say, in COPD, you may also be dealing with periods of the year when the weather conditions are different and you have a lot of dry, windy air. Now that may mean that the air that you're inhaling is quite dry, so that might dry the mucus a little bit more. And you have to think about the fact that maybe the airways in a person with COPD are a bit more sensitive. So there is a little bit of increased inflammation, as we were saying at the beginning. Some people just naturally have more inflammation in their COPD associated with their COPD. So the airways may be more sensitive, so the mucus may be harder to clear, there may be more mucus. So drying that out when you know the, the air is quite dry can make things a little bit worse and make the mucus harder to clear. So that means that you're having to cough more to try to get it out. You're struggling, you're pushing against that, that difficulty. There can also be other issues that may be at play here. So the dryness can also affect, uh, the air dryness can affect people who struggle with other conditions. So may, they may be dehydrated for other reasons. One thing would be just not drinking enough water. So just not having enough fluid intake, water, soups, whatever. Uh, this could be just because sometimes people drink less as we age. This is something that can happen. And we may forget to drink. We may not keep that at the back of our mind. But I think regular fluid intake, that's, you know, small amounts of fluid throughout the day is usually the best way to keep the airways nice and hydrated at a good level. So not excessive fluid intake that can unbalance other things like heart disease and cause some other uh, electrolyte imbalances, but like maybe, you know, one and a half liters a day for most people, two liters a day is probably enough. I wouldn't go more than that. That's probably a little bit excessive. But then other conditions, other medical conditions may also affect the level of hydration in the body. So just think about the fact that COPD is often not coming alone. A lot of people who are diagnosed with COPD are a little bit older. So they might also struggle, for instance, with heart disease. They may struggle with heart failure. So their heart not circulating the fluid enough. So then uh, people with COPD in this situation may require treatments for fluid overload. So they may be on diuretic medication, medication that clears the fluid. So that may lead to a little bit of dehydration if um, there isn't a good fluid balance between what we intake and what we uh, take out. So that's always something to be aware of. So some, some things to, to have in mind. And then just thinking about the, just the coughing action itself. So when the air is dry, when you're coughing more, you're trying to clear that stickly phlegm, you're pushing through it, that can also affect your throat, your voice box. That can become irritated just from the action of coughing because that is, you know, irritating in itself. So this can lead to a bit of a vicious circle. You are, the vicious circles are always common in medicine. Unfortunately, that's, that's how it is. We start off with one thing and then it keeps going. So you may have the dryness in the airways that causes you to cough, that causes you to irritate your voice box, and then you end up having a lot of symptoms. So, so this is probably just a, a situation in which maybe lozenges, like taking something, having uh, an emollient, what it is, honey, you know, some sweet water or something that could keep um, just the hydration levels and the irritation down in the, in the area of the throat that can also reduce the coughing a little bit just to keep a film on the throat. So that could be like small sips of water, lozenges, like I said, all kinds of things can be used that are not medicated just to try to control that symptom and to try to break that vicious circle at some point. But, but all in all, all these situations can cause, so, you know, the environmental exposures to different dusts, the dry air, the situation in which you may have other conditions that lead to a bit of dehydration, you may have a throat um, problem. Uh, all of these things can cause symptoms to get worse. And then that may mean that you may need more medication. So you may require more inhalers, so on and so on. But this also makes you a little bit more vulnerable to infection. So COPD patients, because of all these features that they exhibit, because the mechanism to clear the mucus is not as good as it was before, it may make them more prone to getting, for instance, viral infections. And then, you know, your body is also trying to fight clearing airway particles from dust, fumes, smoking, etc. And you're also trying to battle a virus. So that obviously can lead to a flare up of the COPD. So just trying to work on, through these things, and okay, everyone is different. Everyone has a different feature of this condition. 
that can probably help to, to reduce the problem. But generally, you might need to have a discussion, especially if you're having a lot of flare-ups of your COPD. It might be worth talking to your healthcare providers. What else you could be doing? So is it that the treatment you're on may not cover the exacerbations, the flare-ups very well? Could that be optimized in some way? There are many options for COPD treatment these days and the scene is growing, so that's, that's really good. Or maybe it's something to do with your exposures, dehydration, other things. These are just a few thoughts. That's probably not an exhaustive list. It's just some things that came to mind when I saw the comment. So I hope this was helpful in any way. And if you have further questions, do leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you in future videos. All the best and good health.